Okay, so today's project is a couple of things in one. It's uh, mostly a silent video, ASMR type video, uh, but secondarily, it's a pretty in-depth instructional video. And uh, it's an instructional video because I kind of break down the important sections of carving this uh, green man, the one that's right behind me. And uh, I do so with um, some parts uh, in full speed, uh, silent mode. And then there's a section at the end where I really hone in on details of the eyes. So if you're interested in trying to achieve a more realistic uh, face, kind of like this one, then uh, this video is uh, going to be great. And if you're just kind of interested in chilling out and watching a video uh, that'll relax you, then this is also for you. So stick along either way, and uh, I hope you enjoy it.
So we've got a fair amount of the uh, shaping done, the eye mound. Some of the more subtle details of the rough form are set in this piece. And so I think it's a good time now to talk a little bit about uh, the way that I would approach finishing a carving that's in its rough end stage. So as I said before, most of the types of things that we discussed in this school are the structural elements, the things that lead up to this, why we do certain things that we do and how to execute them. Uh, that's the, the name of the game for fundamentals of wood carving. But in this video, I want to show you, uh, again, how I refine a carving like this um, and take it to the final stages. So as at this point, I've really paid uh, attention to the planes of the face, the forehead being further back than the uh, nose to get that nose to protrude or come out, the um, kind of scale of the nose to the maxillary area, to the outside lateral part of that maxillary area into the zygomatic arch here, how that sort of uh, descends. So we've got a high point, high uh, lower point, and then lowest point here. So all of these things are something you know considerable and worth uh, thinking about when you're. Oh, that's redundant. They're worth considering, is my point. So now I'll come in and I want to start to define the features of uh, the forehead and some of the little kind of muscular issues and. Uh, some of the more subtle things now that we're coming close to a more structured uh, project. So um, now one of my favorite tools for this is a veiner. This is a deep veiner. It's a tool that has uh, about four millimeters in width from end to, from side to side. But what's great about it is that it is um, very deep. It's a very deep use. So the side walls are nice and tall and it's able to uh, be utilized in a number of ways. And I'll show you what that looks like. So for instance, if I wanted to separate the, say the eye bag from the uh, face, you'll notice that I'll turn the tool slightly on its side so that the flat of the tool here, the flat of the uh, left wing of the veiner is almost parallel to the cheek. And then I'll cut in and around like so. This will make the bag stand out away from the piece of wood. So these are little tra tricks or hacks, if you will, uh, that you learn from kind of t turning the tool around and, and trying different angles. 
Uh, we won't get too into the weeds with this. Just get an idea, at least, for you know what it is that we're trying to do. So uh, it's at this point, I want to make sure that my eyes are set deeply enough in the skull. Right now, they're a little close to the surface. They look a little poofy, which is okay for you know uh, a certain situations. But uh, for the reference I'm using, I'm thinking I'm going to take these down just a little bit. Okay, I could actually come in here with a knife and uh, take some of the material down from below this line that we made with our six millimeter number nine, like so. Okay. Like so, and uh, just kind of evaluating from that side profile if I have enough depth. And we're looking pretty good. We might take a little bit more out of the uh, that side profile. Let's just take one last look. Yeah, pretty decent, pretty decent. All right, so let's define the upper lid. We've talked about this before in uh, previous videos on the school, many videos in the school, but we might not have talked about it uh, quite so often in the, uh, um, the uh, YouTube channel. So I'm gonna start by coming in with the uh, hood, the inside corner of the hood and just to find the end of the hood meeting the uh, eyeball. So I'm going to uh, create this hood first because it sticks out ahead of the upper eyelid. So it sits over top the uh, upper eyelid in his particular case. So you can come in with a V tool or a really tiny little veiner. This is like a, oh, I believe it's a three millimeter veiner. So it's another little U tool that uh, can come in and just go over that line with and really just uh, define the hood as it comes around the uh, hood around the uh, hollow of the eye into this inside hollow around the mound of the eye as well like so and here to kind of define the uh, bottom edge of the eye ball okay and this is the lower lid we're now defining. So this is not the opening of the uh, eyelid. We're still setting up the structure uh, for the eyelid here. But the lower lid will hug tightly around the ball of the eye. So we'll have to take this and notice that I'm still emphasizing the roundness of the ball by getting extra depth in this corner and then extra depth here and staying increasingly lighter and lighter with that cut to make sure that this stays again round. Okay. Okay, and now I'm just gonna remove a bit from the outside of the cheek here. Okay, so one thing that really uh, unlocked a whole bunch of uh, revelation for me when carving the eyes was a really nice and simple, simple drawing of a profile of a face. So we'll show you the profile in just a moment here. It's a little bit easier to interpret on two dimensions, uh, but uh, if you can catch this with the uh, dimension of the, of, the, of the video, it'll really help. And I wish uh, it was expressed to me more at a younger age, the importance of setting that profile in properly, making sure that you've got everything that you need from that side profile. It's gonna give you a great setup. Now this guy's got quite a schnoz on him and uh, it's kind of what we were going for. And uh, it's kind of fun for these older guys to give them big schnozzes, makes them, makes them look like they've just been out in the woods alone for you know hundreds of years and the nose you know keeps growing, forehead keeps growing. So you get this crazy gnarled wild character. And that's kind of cool for these green men. Okay, so let's get that profile. All right, there it is. Now the important thing to notice here, look at how the eye is set in the skull, right? We've got the hood, the eyeball, which will be in here, and this part in here, this sits lower and deeper than this part. So this needs to come down, but notice how it's set in the skull, right? So you've got the brow ridges ahead of the ball, and this comes down beneath here. We've got the projection of the nose, nice projection of the nose. And so all these things are very important to uh, 
setting up for the face properly. Okay. Above the brow ridge, the side profile to get the brow ridge to stand out a bit. Okay. Okay, so from here, I'm going to reduce uh, underneath this uh, hood that we defined. You could use a skew for this. Uh, again, the knife would work fine. Uh, I'm just going to use the skew because it's in hand and close by. And I'm just bringing down material beneath that lid. Like so. Maintaining the roundness if, you, if possible. Has to be. There's no ifs there. Has to be. Kept round. Okay, see that? Okay. Very good. Alright, so it's at this point I can Define the lower lid, since the lower lid is going to sit beneath this upper lid. Um, but first, actually, let's define the lower, the upper lid as it comes, just kind of peeks out from the inside corner. You're going to have some of it showing here, like so. Just like that. And uh, you will also notice that the, uh, that the bottom lid will kind of come in like so. And uh, might not open quite as much as one thinks, right? You can always come in and open the eye mound or the eye opening a little bit more later. But uh, I always err on the side of caution and start with kind of a near to where kind of squinted look if I can. And that will really make a big difference when it comes to, uh, you know, being able to uh, make adjustments later. And if you make it too big, it's hard to... Uh, deal with that and you'll end up having to go deeper and uh, it's just a big headache. So start with the narrower opening. Um, if you know, you're unfamiliar, you know, in unfamiliar territory, well, heck, I do it and I've been doing these eyes for a long time. So uh, again, just a thought, uh, personal preference here, but gonna come in with a really small veiner now. This is that one millimeter veiner that I have and just to find the uh, lower eyelid as well as the upper eyelid here. So in no particular order, just coming in upper eyelid lower eyelid. You could actually start with the upper, pair down a bit, you know, to scoot that lower lid in, because again, the bottom eyelid is going to sit lower in than the upper. Uh, I guess I'm just kind of jumping ahead here, so so long as both are set in, you can always bring the level of the lower eyelid down by creating this line a little bit more deeply using that veiner, and just pairing it down like so. I'll show you here. Just taking that lower lid down, right? Just like so. Emphasizing the inside corners. The other reason the skew is nice because it's easier to get in kind of tighter areas. Um, for instance, uh, this would be kind of a hard area to get into with a knife because the sharp end of the knife would be bumping up against the bridge of the nostril. So these are other things to consider. Some things you just learn from trial and error and messing up carving. So, all right, so I'm coming in and uh, defining the. Uh, lower lid here and uh, that's that coming in All right. and uh, gonna come in with a, a knife at this point a skew would work a smaller skew um, in fact I'll do that I'm gonna use a quarter inch skew just to come in and start to remove the material from the between the upper lid here Let's see if I can get a better light on it there it is that's a little better this upper lid, here's that line, and the lower lid, here's that line. Okay, and so you might just go back over the hood as it kind of folds over the eye opening, and just kind of reduce from the inside of these two lines the actual eyeball itself. So I'm just coming in and rounding that out like so. Skew is uh, imperative for this because again, the knife is it's just going to be tricky to get in these tight areas with the knife on both sides. So this just makes life a lot easier. This is why I advocate for the skew. Um, don't know how I got along without it for all of these years. It's uh, so nice to have. So it just makes everything uh, so much 
easier, that's for sure. So just coming in, defining the upper eyelid here, like so. The lower one coming in and defining that ball. I don't know if you can hear that noise, but that's my uh, gate. My gate is uh, unlatched and it's making a bunch of ruckus and I need to fix it. It's actually broken off its latch from the wind pulling it. So I've got to uh, come back and create a new hole in the, for the latch to be attached to. So for now, we just have these wonderful sounds. All right, so you see how that opens up the eyes. All right, well, there's much more to be done here in terms of detailing, shaping, uh, using uh, Vayner's V-Tools to create these subliminary bags. But I just wanted to allude to some of the details. I'm gonna do a little bit more work, go back into fast motion here. Uh, detail the leaves and all that and uh, since we're here and you've joined I'll just uh, put that in the video as well so you can see how this carving is finished up in uh, 2x time or maybe 4x time okay all right let's do it
Thank you.